What we're going to do now is just transform a random function, not one of our key parent functions, just something that's been drawn for us. So someone might give us a graph and say, this is the graph of y equals f of x. So we're calling this function f of x here. So before we can do anything, we need to come up with a table of values. So for our parent function, or you could call it the base function, something that means the starter, like the vanilla, the, the starting right where we're at. Nothing special, no transformations applied. So here we go, x and y coordinates. Let's see what we got. We've got a point down here starting at negative 3, 0. Then it goes up to here to negative 2, 4. Then down here at 1, or sorry, negative 1, 2. And then we have an open point at 2, 2. Now, people say, well, why are we, isn't the open point mean there's nothing there? Why are we bothering with it? Because it's going to move. We have to know where this open point is moved to. So we'll just draw an open point here. So don't forget at the end, our last point here when we draw it is where our open point is. So this thing's going to flip around, so we don't want to lose track of that. So the last point in my table is my open point. Great, we've got it. So now, f of x, right? That's this thing here. They just label it with f of x. They could have called it g of x or q of x or anything of x. Now we want to apply these transformations. So notice I've got an f here also. So let me write down a nice blank version of our function again. And let's try to identify our four transformations. The easiest one is the A and the C out back, but for now, let's focus on A out front and the K inside. Those are the two we need to start with. So what's A? A is negative three, so we'll start with that. Now, once again, the A is negative. It doesn't always have to be negative, but in a lot of my examples, it has been. That causes a vertical reflection. So we're gonna multiply all the Y coordinates by a negative and multiply it by three. So that is a vertical stretch by a factor of three. All right, so what does that mean? It means we'll come over here to our little table. Let's make another one. These are my stretches and my compression, or stretches and reflections and compressions. And we're gonna multiply all the y coordinates by a, and that's negative three times that. So let's just take all of these and times by negative three. So zero times negative three is still zero. We get negative 12, negative six, and negative six. Great. Now, we need the k value. k is negative 1 half. Now, here's where we get into trouble because people go, well, wait a minute. How do I do 1 over negative 1 half? So let's think our way through that and talk about how to do it quickly. So the long way is this. I have 1 over k, right? Well, now we're going 1 over. If k is negative 1 half, how do I deal with that? There's a shortcut. The answer is very quick, but let's talk about why that's the answer. What I'm doing here is I'm really saying, what's 1 divided by negative 1 half? right? That's what that means. Well, how do we divide a fraction? We multiply by the reciprocal. So this is the same as saying 1 times negative 2 over 1. Well, isn't that just 1 times negative 2? The answer is negative 2. So we can skip all of that and just go down to here. So the long story short is when you are dividing, right, 1 divided by a fraction, it just means the reciprocal of that fraction. You just flip it. So all I ended up doing is just going, this is negative 2. So that's what we're going to put right here. So this value here just gets flipped. 1 over is the reciprocal. You flip the fraction. Okay, so we get negative 2 instead of negative 1 half. Well, it's negative, so now we have a horizontal reflection again. And the 2 means there's a horizontal stretch this time instead of a compression by 2. So it's going to get wider. All right, so let's multiply all the x coordinates by that. So 1 over k times x, well, we flipped it. It became negative 2 times x. So take all your x coordinates and multiply them by negative 2. So that's going to give me 6. Uh, positive 4, positive 2, and negative 4. So notice all the x coordinates have changed from positive to negative, and negative to positive, and they've gotten larger. Now we could graph this. We don't have to if it gets too busy drawing too many, but let's see what it looks like so far. 6 over 0 up is here, 4 over 12 down. So now we got a problem because that's way off my graph, right? 2 over 6 down is here, but I want to get a look at least what it kind of looks like. I'm going to draw kind of some rough lines here. Here, oops, that's not too nice. Definitely use a ruler when you're doing this for real. And negative four over six down. Now that's where my open point should be. So notice what's happened here. It's been flipped horizontally like this, and we flipped it vertically upside down this way, right? So it's been flipped both ways. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw the final one. Let's transform it, okay? So what happens when we move this? So we're either moving up, down, left, right. It's gonna look exactly the same as this one, just moved. So I'm gonna erase this so I got a little more room to work here. All right, so the last step is to do our translation. So we take the points that we did in our last table and we're gonna change. So here we go. 
So take these and here we go. So we take what we did with the y's and we add c. We take what we just did with the x's and we add d. So what is d and c? Let's identify them. We got six and five. Now be careful. With x, we take the opposite of what we see because it's x minus negative six here, right? X minus negative six would give you x plus six. So d is actually negative six, but c is exactly what you see. So negative six and positive five. What does that mean? This is a horizontal translation left six units. This is a vertical translation up five units. So we're just going to take that thing I originally drew in blue on the graph and move it left six up five. So let's do that. Take what we did to the x coordinates here and let's minus six. So take all of these numbers and just subtract six from them. Six minus six, four minus six, two minus six, negative four minus six. All right. Oops. <clears throat> My bad. Why did I write two there? Negative 10 there. Right? Oh, I, I, I'm goofing up here. No, no, everything else is good, right? <laughs> Sorry, can't do basic arithmetic, right? Just double checking my numbers. All right, now let's do the y's. What are we gonna do with them? We're gonna add five to all our y's. So take what we did before and literally just add five to them. So zero plus five, negative 12 plus five, negative six plus five, and negative six plus five. All right, let's graph this thing. So zero five is where we're gonna start here. Zero over five up right here. Negative two over seven down right here negative four over one down right here and negative 10 negative one remember the last point was where our open point is so at negative 10 negative one i need to draw an open point because there's nothing there now use your ruler here i'm going to freehand it just to move things along quickly but definitely use a ruler because i'm not doing the best job here freehanding it like that's curving that does not look great that's a little better okay so there's my final graph you did it. Now, we didn't talk about the domain of the original one, but let's talk about that right now, and then we'll look at the domain and range of our transform one. So the domain and range of our original one. How far to the left does it go, and how far to the right does it go? Look, at the lowest it goes is negative 2. The highest it goes is positive 2. Now, it doesn't include the positive 2. It goes all the way up to just before it. So I'm going to put on the left, negative 2, on the right, positive 2. It's greater than or equal to negative 2, but only less than the negative 2. We don't put an equals there because that open point doesn't include it. Now, looking at the original one again, what's my range? The highest we go is 4. So I'm going to put a 4 on the right, y in the middle. The lowest it goes is 0. So our range, what can all our y coordinates be, are between 0 and 4. It includes all of them. So there we go. So now people go, what about this open point? Yeah, it doesn't exist there, but it does exist here. So we're okay. What's the highest and lowest it goes? Now, what about our transformed one? Let's have a look. With the x, now with my x coordinates on the final one, the farthest we go to the left and the farthest we go to the right are here. So if I was to crush this down the x-axis, it would look like that, right? It's between negative 10 and zero. So what we're gonna say is that here, negative 10 to the left, zero on the right, x in between. All right, now, it does not include the negative 10, but it includes the zero because we have that open point there, right? So it doesn't include it, but the zero should be filled in. Now, mine actually, now I'm looking at it, does not look like it's very well filled in. So let's fill that guy in there, right? I don't think I filled him in too well. There we go. What about the Ys? What can they be? Well, the highest they go is five. The lowest they go is negative seven. So that means let's write it out. Negative seven on the low end, five on the high end y in the middle. It includes both of them because we don't have an open point at our ends there. And there you go. You got your domain and range of your final graph, domain and range of the original. We've drawn it. We've transformed it. Make sure you try doing these and good luck.